you're invited to this year's crossover with Apostle Fortune and Melissa Mappanera. Location, Whittacombe Primary School, Cotfield. Invite a friend, bring your family. The event starts at 8 p.m. all the way into 2024. Contact plus 263-774-023-298. This is a night you will not forget. This, this is your new year. year. This is your new start. Don't miss it for any anything. Come experience the word of God. Grace. Miracles. Signs. Wonders, deliverance, and, and, much, and much, 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 much more. But it's very important. Did you know that the children of Israel spent over 40 years, and yet they were just a couple of kilometers away from their promise? Which tells us a very important clue. Sometimes God will process you before he sends you through the process. Let me explain that. God will process you before he sends you through the process. What that means is the process of crossing with God is not a big thing. It's the process of creating a nation that is more important. And I said to you the other time, God calls a man, he turns that man into a family, and like what he has done with us, he turns us into a nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it's very important for you to understand that when God is processing you, it's more valuable to you. You see, the man who was lying there for 38 years, he was in process. But the process of being healed to God was like this. But what did he learn from a 38-year process? The process then tells him that there's one who can take care of all illness and sickness. There's one who should be worshipped and his name is Jesus. Amen. And so it's 38 years of education. Hallelujah. I don't know if anyone can hear what God is saying to them right now and today. And so the children of Israel are in the wilderness and various things are about to happen. I want us to take a look at, um, you know, it's very strange um, what I'm about to have us look at here. I want us to take a look at 13 verse 8. Um, 13 verse 8, it wasn't a part of what I would look for or, or look at. Uh, it says, and of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshea. Um, okay, uh, son of Nun, and that's very important. And I want us to take a look at um, verse 16. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. It's very interesting. Okay. I want you to understand this. And um, I want us to take a look at uh, verse 24 of, of, of chapter 14. Go to chapter 14, verse 24. Don't worry, I'll, 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 I'll start to preach Shona very soon. Changenda kupariza Shona manji manji. Ucha zondibata, numu tanganda pariza churungu kuitravari kumiri. Let's take a look at verse uh, 24, chapter 14. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein to he went and his seed shall possess it. So, so God is not just concerned with you. We see that God is also concerned with your servant, with your, with your progeny. He's concerned with your children. Amen. So when God makes you a promise, it's important that you tell your children that even if it's a promise or prophecy that's given to me by the man of God, it doesn't stop with me only. It comes to you. God is not just concerned with you taking the promised land. No, you remember a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. So prof prophecy is generational. It just doesn't deal with you. If I say you're going to be rich, I'm not talking to you only. The loudest people who should be making noise is your boys and your girl. Understand? And so it's important that children understand whenever a man of God calls their parents to talk to them. The children are the ones that should be the most rowdy because your parents will not see the fullness of it. But you are the one who will enjoy the fullness of it. So it's very important for us to understand that. Hallelujah. I'd like for you to take a seat in the presence of God as I pray. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for the word. And I thank you that you're helping us. 
And Lord, I pray that I'm as rowdy and as radical and as alive and as fireful as possible. And Lord, I pray even for the passports I'm looking at here, that they are blessed and whoever they belong to, Father, I pray that they travel to the destination that they wish to travel to and their matter is settled now as I speak in the name of Jesus. I just want to do a little more reading and um, if you take a look at 13 again, it looks like I'm going backwards. I've, I've, I've shared with you my main text. If you look at 13 verse 21 and th there's something uh, here that, that is, is, is absolutely powerful. So they went and searched the land from the wilderness of Zion to Rehob his men come from Hamath and they descended to the south and came to Hebron and ETC. I want you to check this out. Um, come with me to 23. And they came unto the brook of Eshkol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes and they bear it between two upon a shaft, a staff, okay? And they brought of pomegranates and of the figs and the place was called the brook Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel did cut down from thence and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days hallelujah now I want you to see something about God and God in brooks a place called a brook Elijah was at a brook and a brook is a place of transition but it's also a place of provision. So Elijah at the point of a drought in a wilderness experience is sent to a brook where ravens would bring meat and he'd drink water. And then he transitioned into the widow's house. Hallelujah. And over here you find a similar picture taking place here. It's the first time it happened. It's God with them at a brook. And then at that brook they were able to get grapes. Look to your neighbor and say grapes. And just a point because I'm like a walking encyclopedia these days don't have seedless grapes they have very little nutrition they have no benefit for you if you're going to get grapes make sure they have the seeds uh, there's something in that seed that if you keep it underneath your tongue for a little bit they begin to release more benefits in the seed of the grapes and what they've done is they've taken out the seeds from grapes and you say they are an inconvenience no that's where the power is the seed of the grape hallelujah so the brook of Kidron, of, of Kidron is uh, it's another brook this is uh, Eshkol as you're looking at it and I want you to notice something here that uh, the children of Israel walked in and they began to spy and as they were spying the, the grapes that they got were so large <laughs> if you carry a cluster of grapes you carry it in one hand the grapes that they carried were so large they needed a staff a shaft between two people and they would hang the things between and then carry the pomegranates and the figs and the grapes right in there. I think God is about to send someone into a land that is so full and so well to do that you, you need two people to even carry back the evidence of how good that land is. Mm. I'm looking at a marriage right now where God is going to put a staff between you and say carry this back to your family and show them how good the way I'm about to send you is. Oh, hallelujah. I feel God's about to do something here. 40 days of spying in the land. The problem is with the land, they are the sons of Anak. Uh, these are the Anakim or the giants, the children who are the byproduct of the fallen ones with the daughters of men. And so angels were there. But their progeny was not destroyed. It remained in the earth. So you find people like Goliath are still there. And Og, king of Bashan, is still there. And what happened is 12 spies went in. Hallelujah. Then the Lord started to speak to me and he showed me something. He said, notice something here that we call Joshua Oshea. So wait a minute, Lord. All this time we're saying Joshua, 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 Joshua. He's not called Joshua. God said, yeah, he's not called Joshua. He's called Oshea. Oof. but just before they go into spy Moses calls him to the side and says listen here son um, there's a problem here you're called Oshea which means salvation I'm going to put a 
prefix to you and I'm going to call that prefix, it's, it's going to have your name changed to Joshua. So your name means salvation, but when I deal with it as Moses, I'm going to re-prophesy before you enter into spy. And from now on, you're going to be changed from salvation to Jehovah is the one who saves. So I'm going to put something across to you, which is if he went in as O'Shea, potentially you would have had only Caleb coming through and saying we can take the land. So what the prophet does is he divinely realigns his servant so that he can also now have the proper speech because you cannot say salvation and ignore it as salvation. You now must say the Lord saves for you to believe to say he can also take the land. Listen, Caleb is the only one who came back saying we can take it. Then Joshua now having a name change came out and said, yes, I agree with Caleb. But if he had gone in called Oshea, only one person would have said, we can take it. And that would have been Caleb. Caleb naturally means brave, courageous, faithful. And why I know that only one person would have come back and said, we can take it is because God singles him out and he says, listen, naturally you have a different spirit. I'm about to talk to somebody here today and that person has got to have a different spirit. You cannot take the promise without a different spirit. You cannot enter into what God wants you to enter into without a different spirit. Listen, when you are dealing with God, you need to develop within yourself the mind that says, I refuse to think like the rest of them think. It's, it's amazing how God then looks for you to say, who can look and say, I am capable of doing it. You see, if you have a spirit that looks like everybody else, a spirit that thinks like everybody else, an attitude about you that is the same as everybody else, you will never enter into the promise. Um, yes, yes, yes. Three weeks ago, Sister Kay stood up here and she said she called the landlord and said, listen here, landlord, your rent is a bit too much. Now I'm talking on behalf of all of these people lower the rent and people said how come you had the guts to do such a thing it's simple it's a different spirit it's now allowing everybody else to access the promise of lowered rents but there's a problem we send in 12 people inclusive a renamed person and when we come in, we testify and say, for sure, man, everything is brilliant. Look at these grapes, the size of a baby's head. We had to carry it on a staff. Look at the pomegranates. Look at the figs, man. But somewhere in there, you forgot that it's God who let you in and you moved around for 40 days. And 40 nights and nobody saw you moving. And you harvested and you carried things and nobody saw you moving. Now there's an interesting name here. And it turns out from my looking into this. Each person who went into spy had something hidden in their name. Because one of the gentlemen here, his name means secrecy or secret. And so by naming, Moses was able to change the outcome for Joshua. Listen, when a prophet calls you around and he tells you, I'm changing your name, he's about to change your circumstances. When a prophet says they will no longer call you this, they will call you that, he's about to change your circumstances. So when you take a look at verse 14, Nabi, for example, it caught me because it's, it sounds like Nabi as a seer. But in actual fact, this Nabi is secret. What is done in secret or that is what is invisible. Are you understanding what God is saying to you? So each person, you've got Caleb for bravery. You've got this one saying saves. Then God comes and he says, now nah, you have Nabi there, which means you are able to move in cloaked. 
spy the land for 40 days and walk out without the giants spotting you. I'm about to prophesy something into your life right now and what I'm about to say is a very simple thing. May God give you the ability to walk among your enemies undetected. See what you have to see. Get the evidence of what you need to get the evidence of and come back and testify we can take the land. It seems like as you look through this, uh, some guys had an idea and they said, listen, the food looks great, but the giants are too big. Have you ever looked at the area looks great, but the other businesses look mean? Oh, Jesus, I need to talk to somebody who's alive. I'm trying to talk to somebody who feels. Have you ever looked at, oh Lord, the architect has built, has drawn nice plans, but the, the, the budget looks too big. Come on, young single men. Have you ever looked at a woman, not because she was a big woman, but she just is so beautiful, she looks like a giant. How can I even approach? Come on, somebody. Hello, somebody. But that's your promised land. You're potentially looking at your wife. I'm going to show you how to get into that promised land. Hallelujah. Have you ever looked at a shop and thought the rent must be crazy? I can't afford it. Look at the people, the cars that they park out. I don't even have a car. It looks too big. The giants here are too big. But I've come with a word from the most high God. And the word I bring is this. You can take the land. Come on, CLC, you can take the land. You had one miscarriage, it looked bad. You had another miscarriage, it looked terrible. You had a third and a fourth miscarriage, it didn't look good. But God is telling me, even the land of pregnancy, you will possess it. In the name of Jesus, you will carry to term. You will give birth without a hassle. Because there's a spy among you. Somebody, I put bravery in him. And another one, when he was messing up, uh, I corrected him. And he also came back, backing the other one up and saying, we can take the land. Uh, you can be rich. Uh, you can be healed. Uh, you can be prosperous. You can have a baby. Uh, yes, sir, I like those drums. Uh, you keep them coming. Uh, I feel somebody's about to do something great in this place. Just ask God for a different spirit. Ah, you've been too timid. Uh, you've been too quiet. Uh, you've been moving around like a church mouse. Uh, but God has sent me to tell you, uh, stop being timid. Uh, you can take that land. Uh, doesn't matter how big the hall looks. Uh, doesn't matter how big the stadium ground looks. Uh, doesn't matter how big the United States looks. Uh, doesn't matter if you're from Africa. You can take that land. Uh, matter of fact, they're waiting for you, Mapondera. Get ready to get on a plane and go and minister to the people. Uh, they need people with integrity. You can take that land. Uh, are you hearing what God is saying to you? Uh, I am tired of women uh, who walk around with a complex. Uh, you know, a complex, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm not pretty enough. Uh, you don't have to be a slay queen uh, to be a real queen. Uh, Esther said, take the makeup off. Uh, I can take the man without the makeup. Uh, there's a different spirit inside Esther. Are you hearing what God is saying to you right now? Stop being timid, you can take the land. Oh my God. Last week I said to you, it costs nothing to call up a private school and ask how much does it cost. All it takes is your bravery. You see, a dollar worth of airtime to invest in an inquiry can open the gateway to the change of your child's future. 
but because you don't even have faith to call listen it's free to inquire there's no charge to inquire the problem is your faith you are too timid within yourself I'm telling you somebody in here is walking out with a different kind of spirit how much does it cost where did you buy it how many of them can I get Oh, you don't look like the type to get it. Uh, one time I walked into Mercedes Benz. They quoted me 187,000 euros. Uh, I was parked outside with another Mercedes Benz. Uh, they were looking at it and they thought, well, your car is too old for you to be able to afford this one. I turned around and I said, listen to me, man. This is a bunch of metal. It's a bunch of rubber and plastic and silicone and glass, which is still melted sand. I can take your land. Are you understanding when, you, when you're of a different spirit? You don't see things the way they see things. You see see things the way God shows you to see things are you hearing what God is saying to you today I feel like preaching if somebody's ready for the word of God let's get the word of God listen I'm in a place where now I'm looking and I'm seeing these men they move in 40 days and 40 nights it's amazing how they are like a precursor to the resurrected Christ now let me bring this in for you nicely they are showing you that Jesus is going to come in and move after the resurrection and spy what the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth the Bible says Jesus walked for 40 days and 40 nights after he was raised from the dead and at his departure two witnesses were left uh, and they spoke and they said uh, the same Jesus that you're looking at the same manner that he went is the same manner that he will return uh, is it a Caleb uh, is it a Joshua type angel I have no idea but all I know is this Jesus left me with a different spirit uh, you call him the Holy Ghost uh, I call him my best friend uh, you call him the Holy Ghost uh, I call him my master uh, you call him the Holy Spirit spirit uh, I call him my best friend uh, you call him the Holy Spirit uh, I call him the chief executive officer you call him the Holy Ghost uh, I call him buddy or pal uh, you call him the Holy Ghost uh, I call him captain my captain or captain uh, you call him the Holy Ghost uh, I call him all power and God made sure that the different spirit was on me uh, I don't have a spirit that is a spirit of the world uh, rather I have a spirit who comes from God uh, whereby I cry Abba Father are you hearing what God is saying to you today uh, this is where the pain is uh, you carry the heaviness of the word of God the kabod on your shoulder uh, in other words uh, there's one person please join me pastor I love your kicks uh, just join me and stand right in front of me and look towards the keyboardist uh, and so we have a staff between us uh, and we put the staff on the shoulder and it's running across to where pastor is uh, and all the things we took from the promised land are right between us they are heavy uh, and so I have the ability to look at what God has given me uh, and the person in front of me is looking ahead to go and give the report uh, we are not told who it is that carried the heaviness uh, I am suspecting it could have been Caleb and Joshua uh, why because listen to this uh, if the other crew comes back and they say we cannot take the land it also means they refuse to carry the fruit uh, uh, because there is no way you can carry the fruit uh, and enter in front of the people and say we can't take it and yet you are enjoying uh, the heaviness the density of God's word between the two of you uh, and so uh, Caleb is in front uh, he's looking forward uh, and Joshua who has just been renamed from Hosea to Joshua is looking and saying this is why Moses called me God is my salvation or our salvation uh, are you understanding what God is saying to you here you need to have a mindset uh, a mindset that says uh, uh, God is for me uh, God is my savior no one can stop me uh, are you hearing what God is saying to you right now you're invited to this year's crossover with Apostle Fortune and Melissa Mappender location Whittacombe Primary School Cockfield. invite a friend bring your family the event starts at 8 p.m all the way into 2024 contact plus 263-774-023-298 this is a night you will not forget this is your year
This is your new story. Don't miss it for any anything. Come experience the Word of God. Grace. Miracles. Signs. Wonders. Deliverance. And, and much, and much, much, much more. more. What you're failing to recognize is this. My size as a grasshopper has nothing to do with my ability. My size as a grasshopper has everything to do with his ability. So as a grasshopper, if I can eat giant sized food, it means I was being fed to deal with the giant. Uh, You see, you cannot expect for giant sized blessings and not fight a giant or two. I'm wondering a very big question. So all the time Joshua was at the foot of the mountain, the children of Israel were making sacrifices. He was called a share. Then Moses detects something. Moses detects that God is about to shut him out of the promised land. And he's about to be shut out because God has already detected something in him. In chapter 20, I'm going to talk to you about speaking to a rock. You're going to beat the rock twice. So in order to ensure that Even though he will be rejected, his protege can make it in. He changes the protege's name and he keeps it as a reminder for himself and all of Israel that it's not just salvation, it's Jehovah saves. There's something I need to give you a warning about. Did you know that deliverance from Egypt came at the price of 10 miracles? Am I correct? It's 10 what? Miracles. Watch the mathematics. I'm not good at it, but watch me, watch me move. Watch me move. <laughs> My wife will start to laugh if I say that. Watch me move. Are you ready? 10 miracles to come out of Egypt. Ten spies got it wrong. But if you know your Bible very well, you will also discover that the reason why it took them 40 years to enter into the promised land, they are what are called the ten temptations that Israel returned to God for his ten miracles. So everyone that's here that celebrates miracles, be careful because for each miracle you see, Be careful not to be tricked to tempt God in a particular way. And one of the ways that we normally do that is doubting that we can take what God wants us to take. These are my closing remarks. Ten miracles, ten faulty spies, and then ten temptations that yielded a 40-year sojourn in the wilderness. Forty is the number of testing. I normally don't like to tell this to people. You're invited to this year's crossover with Apostle Fortune and Melissa Mabonera. Location, Whittacombe Primary School, Cotfield. Invite a friend, bring your family. The event starts at 8 p.m. all the way into 2024. Contact plus 263-774-023-298. This is a night you will not forget. This is your year. This is your new start. Don't miss it for any anything. Come experience. The Word of God, grace, miracles, signs, wonders, deliverance, and And much, 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 much more.